problem. Please help her out. Life is short. Yes. Let's do another one. <laughs> A, Irene, please come to me. Two, one, one. You have uh, two, two, zero. Okay. Matrix B is given as two, two, one. Then you have zero, one, one. Okay. So let's do this together. By dimension, this is a two by what? Three. This is also what? A two by three. Can I do the operation A times B? Can I do multiplication A times B? Yes, sir. No, please. <laughs> Can I multiply matrix A and B? No. No, please. Oh, no, please, exactly, because the number of columns here is not the same as the number of what? Rows okay. here. I hope that is clear. Yes. Okay, so let's have C. Given as, uh, C is given as uh, 3, 1, 2. We have 1, 4, and 2. This is a 3 by 2 dimension. Can I multiply... A and C. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the number of columns here is the same as the number of row here. Mm -hmm. So let's do A times C. Like I said, I take the whole of this, drop it on the column, do my sum product. Okay. So we're going to have two times three plus one times one plus one times two. Then the next one will be two times one plus one times four plus one times what two. The next operation I'm going to do two times three plus two times one plus zero times two. Then my next is two times one plus two times four plus zero times what two let me go back here let me clean this guy here all right so matrix a times c let's do it together two times three is six plus one times one that's seven plus one times two will give you what? Nine. Two times one is two. One times four is four. Plus two, that is six. Six plus one times two, that should give you eight. Then the next one I have what? Two times what? Three, that's six. Plus two times one, that's eight. Eight plus zero is eight. Two times one is two. Plus two times four, that's eight plus zero times uh, two. So this is four, eight, that should give you what, 10. All right, so is it clear now? Do we all follow? Yes, please. Perfect, any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, please. This is the multiplication operation. If you have a question, ask quickly, then we can move forward. Perfect. Nobody has a question. What did you get? Then we can do another operation called transpose. Okay, transpose of what? Matrix. By transposing matrix, all we are saying is that we want to change rows into what? Columns. Okay, so that if I have A here, let me use this same example. Matrix A. Okay, I have matrix A giving us this guy here. And I want to find the transpose of A. I'll write it as A, T, T up there. It's just to change all rows into what column. So this will be two, one, one, and this will be two, two, zero. It is just a transpose. Transpose is 
let's say the product of this guy here, if I want to do A times C transpose, I'm going to have what? 9, 8, 8, and what? 10. Simple. So transpose is just a straightforward discussion. So this is what we want to explain for the multiplication. As I said, you see the selection, 2, 4, 3, we drop it on what? 1, 4, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 2, 3, 1 to satisfy this figure. Then I pick the same and do that. Then this is an example of what? A transpose of what? A matrix. Okay, so in simple terms, you should understand that some matrix operation can be performed. Then we have another matrix, which we call an identity what? Matrix. Identity matrix are simply square matrix, okay? And by way of dimension, square matrix, the dimension, that is the number of row is the same as the number of what? Column. So that if I have matrix I giving us an identity matrix, it should have a dimension by what? N by what? N. And by definition, all square matrix, which are identity matrix, all the elements in the diagonal are one. The remaining elements are all what? Zero. So if I have A, and let's say an identity matrix is this, and it's a square matrix, I should have one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. All the elements in the diagonal are all ones. The remaining elements are what? Zero. And that is defined as I, giving us an identity matrix. Now we can perform a special operation by way to say that anytime I pick any given matrix, which is also a square matrix by itself, if I multiply it by an identity matrix, my result should give me the matrix itself. So anytime you multiply an identity matrix by any given matrix in the form of a square, you should get an identity word matrix. Yes, someone's hand is up. You can ask your question. So please, um, can we go over the identity again? We are saying the identity matrix are square matrix, which has uh, all the elements in the diagonals represent the number one. The remaining elements are all zeros. That is a special form of what the identity matrix. So I'm saying that if I have a three by three dimension, means that it's a square what matrix. A two by two is a square matrix. So if I have this guy here, okay, I can say that. If this is a three by three matrix, uh, means that all the elements here in the diagonal should be one. The remaining should be what? Zero. Therefore, I'll have one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. This is an example of an identity matrix, which is a square matrix. You can also have one, zero, zero, one. Is that okay? Then we say that when I multiply any identity matrix to a given matrix, which is also a square matrix, or it satisfies the multiplication rule, the result is going to be the matrix itself. Or a matrix times an identity matrix will give you the matrix itself. Please note this. We'll be using this along the line, that uh, form of property. This is what I was trying to explain here. Then we have another form of a matrix called the inverse of what? A matrix. By inverse, we are simply saying that we can find the inverse of a given matrix, okay? But let's say that, and that will be written as such. So if we say let B denotes N by N matrix, please note N by N matrix such that A times B is giving me B times A. And the answer is an identity matrix 
Then B, if this condition is satisfied, then B is the inverse of what? A. Please note that if this condition, we do the operation and we are getting an identity matrix, then B is the inverse of what? A. I will be taking an example to solve it, but note this caveat here. Uh, somebody's hand is up. You, who is that? Um, Bright. Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. Please, yeah, 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 like your, vo your voice is going faster than the board. <laughs> okay, I hear. I will, I, will, I will slow. Who asks a question again so I can continue? Maybe it's the internet. All right, so let's make progress. So please note that you can see the board now, right? The screen I'm sharing. No, please. Yes, the identity matrix. Can you see this board? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, so I, I was talking about these caveats. We can only get an identity matrix by multiplying A times B. If, first of all, B is an N by N matrix and B is the inverse of A, then we can get an identity matrix. We will solve this example using some method. So note here too, we are saying that A times A inverse, okay, is equal to A inverse times A to give you an identity what matrix. So if you multiply a matrix times an inverse of that matrix, you will get an identity matrix. We'll be using this one. So there are two ways that we can solve either we find a solution to a problem using the identity matrix or the inverse of what? The matrix, I'll be discussing that. Then I have this question for you. Not every matrix has an inverse. If no inverse exists, then the matrix is called singular. That's a non-inventable. Non-square matrix are not invertible. Why? For 20 months. Non-square. Non-square matrices are non-vertible. Remember, I was explaining something here, so you should bear in mind. Non-square matrix are not invertible. Can anybody uh, help us? Non-square matrices. Non-square matrices. Okay, think about it. We'll come back to the question. Okay, think about it. Think about it. Before we end the class, I'll ask you again. You may understand as we journey along. Okay, so let's make progress. So this is just rank of N by N matrix. It's just an explanation. I'll come back to this as well. Let's move to some properties of matrix. Okay. And we are making an assumption here. If this assumption holds, that suppose we have A, B, C, they are all regular matrices. And we have an identity matrix giving us I. And we have a matrix O, also having all its elements as what? Zero for all entries. Then the following properties can occur. For addition properties, if we pick associative A matrix A plus matrix B plus C to give you the same results as matrix A plus into bracket matrix B plus what C, if they are all regular matrix, please note that. Then for commutative, A plus B is equal to B plus A. Then for additive, this should also give you this, and that should give you the same. Only if this assumption holds. Please note that. The multiplication, we've already talked about it. If I have this matrix A multiplying into bracket matrix B times C, if they are regular matrix, and we satisfy the multiplication condition, then for whatever I have here, should give me the same results here. 
And we've also agreed that for an identity matrix, if I multiply an identity matrix to a given matrix, which is an N by N, my result is going to be the matrix itself. Then the rest are all the caveats. We've explained this one as well. Okay, then the rest. So there are several properties that we can be using. And for equality, we'll be applying this assumption along the line when we want to find the uh, solution for any given matrix that we have. Means that, as I told you, if I multiply an inverse of a matrix times another matrix, it should give me what? An identity what? Matrix. Please remember this. Therefore, if I have the inverse of A multiplying A times X, a inverse times A should give you an identity word okay. matrix. Means that X will still stand. And we've also said that if I multiply the inverse of a matrix by any given matrix, I should be getting what? An identity word matrix. Yes. Remember this guy here. Therefore, X will be equal to A inverse times what? B. And eventually I'll be getting an identity word matrix. I'll use this caveat in the course of our discussion. So please watch out for uh, the discussion. So actually we'll say that X is the result answer that we are looking for, good. So by way of operation, if I want to find the inverse of a matrix using the left multiplication, what I just discussed, okay, then we can use this rule all the way to, to say that B will be equal to what? The inverse of what? A. If I apply this rule, that is the left multiplication rule. How do I solve for that? We'll be using a method called gauss jordan method. Let me say that there are several methodologies we can use to find the inverse of what? The matrix we are looking for. But for the purpose of this class, we are going to use what we call the gauss Jordan method. Please note that I'm not going to use determinant. I'm not going to use any other technique. I'm going to use the Gauge Jordan method. And for uniformity and conformity, if I give you any problem in matrix and I'm asking you to find the inverse of that matrix, please don't use any other methodology apart from the Gauge Jordan method. That is what we are discussing for this class all right and we'll do more of this in lecture two as we journey along any question then i can move on to the next slide if you have any question please go ahead your number is cool so we can have a frank discussion along the line so let's go to systems of linear equation Okay, remember I said we can transform a set of linear equation into a matrix form and find the results. So let's look at a, an equation, a linear equation. You remember you were told that 2x plus 2x plus uh, 3y is equal to a certain number. Okay, this is a linear word equation. All right, but we want to redefine all this information that we have in this equation. Therefore, a linear equation can also be in this form. If a linear equation is in this form, I should be able to define all the elements that I see in that equation. And we are not going to do x plus y anymore from this class, because if you have more uh, x plus y, you have more plus z plus whatever until you finish or you'll be writing all the alphabet together. We are now changing from x, y to x1 and x2, x3 all the way to xn. So please note that. Then from this, we can say that x1 or the xi's, they are all the unknown word variables because we don't know them. And that is what we are going to 
look for. A1 to A1 or AI and B also are referred to as what? Parameters. Please note that. However, because we are in the business class and we want to do business modeling, we are redefining XIs, AI, and B, those parameters. Therefore, we are going to call all XI as what? Decision variable. So X1, X2 to Xn will refer to as decision variables. Then AI will be referred to as what? Coefficient of the decision variable. Okay, the coefficient for each decision variable should be defined. Then B, in this case, will refer B to B as what? The resource to be utilized. So that if a business has resources, they want to use it to produce some product, given that they have some form of labor, some form of capital, in order to produce some amount of product, what would be each unit to what produce in order to achieve the objective they are setting to or the objective they want to achieve? If you walk to Accra Mall this afternoon, in the quest of buying something at the mall, so let's say you go to ShopRite, you are going to shop for your shop box or whatever you have. You have some amount of money in your pocket that you are going to use to buy those items. So we are referring that amount you have in your pocket as the resource, your capital. Then you are going to buy some Tampico or you are going to buy biscuit or you are going to buy Milo drinks, okay? You do not know how many to buy at every point in time because of the money that you have in your hands. However, you go to the shop and you realize the unit cost for each of these items that you are going to buy. Those unit costs are what we refer to as what? The coefficients of the decision variables. That is the quantity you are yet to know or yet to know to buy based on the resources and the unit costs that you have. If we go through all these, we say that we are doing what business what modeling. So modeling is simply to say that formulate the problem or break the problem down. If you are able to formulate the problem nicely, you go forward to analyze sorry, to solve the problem. After you have solved the problem, you have to analyze and interpret the problem that you have. And for the next four weeks or so, we are going to be doing business modeling in the form of what? Linear programming. So please note that. So this is what I'm introducing you to now. Decision variables, coefficient, and resources. So for example, let's say we have, let me clean what I have, my massacre here, these things. Can you hear me guys? Yes, please. Perfect. Sometimes the internet can be a bit scrappy. My system is not responding. Just hold on, I'll correct it now. Okay, so 
I can't erase this. I don't know why. But let me read. A household has 300 to spend on rice and soda drinks. I hope you can see. Pardon my massacre. A bag of rice costs 20 Ghana cities and a pack of soda drink costs 15. If the household should spend all of the 300 Ghana cities, write a mathematical expression relating to the number of rice and soda drinks to buy and available monetary world resources. So from this problem, like we said, you have to identify the decision variables, identify the coefficient and the resources that we have. So who can help us? What is the resource here? What are the resources or what is the resource here? Eric? Yes, go ahead. Uh, text the resource variable is uh, no, it's just a resource. Just say resource. The resource, the resource. yes, mm -hmm. is it's what 300 cities. 300 Ghana cities. Okay, can we identify the coefficients? Joshua, yes, yes, go All ahead. Yes, right, so. so the coefficient of the so that's 20 variable. cities and the, the 15 cities. Perfect, the 20 cities. Good. Then, can you identify the decision variables here? Remember, we're saying the number of something. Mm -hmm. Who can help? So the okay. decision variables are. It's rice and soda drinks. Okay, so we are looking at the number of rice and soda drinks to buy. Yeah. Those are the decision variables. <clears throat> so we'll say that since they are two, one will be X1, the other will be what? X2. Therefore, if I have the number of rice, I can say let the number of rice represent x1 and let x2 represent the number of soda drinks to buy please note that it is the number of and not the product that we are looking at yes, sir. you cannot say that oh, let right. x1 be rice and let yeah. s2 be soda drinks to buy no x1 we are looking at the number of the number of always remember the number of rice and the number of soda drinks to buy. Why can't this guy get off my screen? <laughs> okay, so. Someone can help. All right, so let's see the solution. So let X1 and X2 be the number of bags of rice. And packs, remember I said number, number of bags of rice and packs of soda drinks to buy. Then we are told to represent this whole problem in formulate it in what? A mathematical expression. Note that now I know the unit cost for what? Bag of rice. And the unit cost for pack of drinks. If I should buy this together and add them, it should give me the total amount I need to what spend. So I have this 20x1 plus 15x2 equals to what? 300. Means that this will be the total amount to spend. The coefficient times the number, which I don't know, to give me the total cost for bag of rice. Then packs of rice. Then this will also be the total cost for packs of what? Soda drinks. If I should add these two together, it should give me the total amount I am going to what? Spend.
Okay, so uh, the tool I'm using, I'm using, I'm using this guy here to erase. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So let's see this uh, another problem. Okay, your mobile phone provider, Django, we are doing modeling. So I need you to take your time in this modeling process. Your mobile phone provider, Django, charges you 0 0.07 per minute of talk, 0 0.005 per text, and 0 0.02 per minute of internet usage. If your monthly total phone bill is T, Formulate a linear equation to represent your monthly mobile bill. Like I said again, we need to know our decision variable. Then we have to also know the coefficient of the decision variable. Then we can know what? Resource. Resources. So let's go through briefly. Let's formulate the problem. So what, how, who can define the decision variables for us? Pay attention. Mm -hmm. What are we looking for? Um, mm -hmm. One after on the other. Yes. Top, top. So, then, how many decision variables should we have? Yes. Uh, uh, Bright Edu? Three. Three decision Three. variables. Three, <laughs> sir. Okay. Namely, talk, mm -hmm. X, X, X1, X1. and internet usage. Great. X1, X2, and X3. Good. So let's define them properly. X1 will be what? Talk. The unit of talk. Of talk. It is not talk. I just explained. Don't say talk. X1 will be what? Per, per the minute, unit per minute of talk. Per minute of talk. Uh -huh. So X1 will be the amount. Amount of <laughs> Of talk per what? Of minute. minute. Yeah. X will be what? Amount of what? Text. Per text. X3 will yeah. be what? The amount. Amount per text. Per what? Amount. Internet what? Oh, you see. Good. So let's see this. This is. You see. Let's X1, X2, X will be the amount of talk. Text. Internet usage in a. Uh, Month, you don't say let x1 be talk, let x2 be text, let x3 be internet usage. Remember, the unit of measurement here is in figures, so amount. The other one is in numbers. Please note that. What are the coefficients do we have here? 0 0.07. Great. Then our total resource is what? PT. <laughs> T, good. So let's now put all of them together. Our equation is going to be what? 0 0.07 0 0.07 x1 0.05 x2 plus x3 x3 c Great. So that's what we have here. You're following. That's perfect. 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 All right. So then you should be able. So all that we have done is doing business what modeling, finding a problem. We formulate it. Now we have to solve it and interpret the problem. So the next stage is to look at when we have more than one linear word equation. So we are having systems of what? Linear equation. You can have in the one problem, one equation, the next equation, all the way to millions of what? Equation. The definitions are going to be the same. How we define A, how we define the, uh, the unknown variables, and how we define what the resources. But remember that we said if you have 
systems of linear equation, like this guy here, if I want to solve this problem, I can use matrix to solve what? This problem. Or I can use matrix to solve that word problem. How do I do that? I need to transform the set of linear equation into a matrix word form. So watch here. I'm going to take you through one systems of linear equation. Then we can move on to how to transform it. So let's go on. A household has 400 Ghana cities to spend on rice, soda drinks, and soap. 40 Ghana cities is to be spent on transportation to the house. A bag of rice sells for 20 cities and costs one cities to transport. A pack of soda drinks sells for 15 and costs two cities to transport. And a box of soap sells for 10 cities and one Ghana city to transport. If the household should buy exactly five bars of soap, write a relation detailing how the available money is spent on the items. You have to mm -hmm. assume that all the 400 cities and the 40 cities should be spent on shopping and transportation respectively. Guys, let's define our decision variables. We've done an example, so it shouldn't be a problem. Define your decision variables. Identify the coefficients. Identify the resources. Quickly, how many decision variables do we have here? Three. Uh, four. Three. 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 Yes. Three. Three. Okay, so let's define the three. X1 will be what? Rice. 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 Oh, not rice. X1 yeah. will be what? Quantity of rice. So that drinks and The quantity of rice or the number of rice to buy. X2 will be the number of soda drinks. To buy. That's what I said you should do, my friends. Okay, that is okay. what I have here. Number, number of number, quantity of units of decision variable. Then you can see the example. We know that a unit cost of bag rice will be sold for what? 20. So it means that then 15 for what? Soda and 10 for what? And we have 400 to spend. So I have 20x1 plus 15x2 plus 10x3 equals to 400. 400. Then I have another resource called transportation. To spend one city to transport for rice, please mute yourself, mute yourself, whoever is disturbing us. Good. Then we have two cities to transport for uh, soda drinks and one Ghana to transport for what? Bagos. So, so you have X1 plus 2X2 plus X3 equals to 40 to spend. Then there was another caveat, which wasn't a resource caveat, but let's say a demand caveat. If the household should buy exactly five bars of soap, write a relationship. It means that we know bags or uh, five bars or packs of soap is represented as what x3 so exactly means that's what we are supposed to spend so x3 is equal to what five all right you can now ask your question if you have any so this is our modeling yes uh, let me see the hands are there please go on and followed by bright princess then the other name I can ba, ba, ba smokes. What name is that? Please write your proper name. T back smoke. I didn't answer, no, no. <laughs> this name saying. is strange. Yeah, go ahead. What is your name, please? Bags of uh, smoke or whatever smoke. Is. I'm justice. I'm justice. Justice, please change. Don't change. Make it official, okay? 
Yes, it's ask your question. Sir, the, you had a break in the internet, so I missed the second part. Can you please go over that? Oh, oh, okay. We are saying that the next one is so. Let's. This is. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. This guy here. The devil is a liar. Okay. This guy here is what the amount to spend. So let's name this what capital or let's call it our budget. The next one is our transport. We are told that we have 40 to transport the items. A Ghana cities will cost us to transport rice. Another Ghana, two Ghana cities will help us to transport soda drinks. And one Ghana cities will help us to transport what? Uh, so, therefore, X1 plus X2 plus X3 is equal to the 40 we are to spend. We have another caveat here, which is not necessarily a resource to spend. But we are told, let's name it a demand constraint or demand issue. We are to buy exactly five bars of what? Soap. Therefore, we are saying that X3 should be equal to what? Five. We should buy exactly five. X3 is equal to what? Five. So this becomes our modeling for the whole word problem. What we have done is we have formulated the problem into in a simple word form. Okay, any other question? Yes, any other question so we can move to the next one. Okay. So let's see this one. The next example, let's read it together and try and formulate the problem quickly. We have uh, Kopiko Co 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 Farms Company owns 50 acres of land. land. That is mm -hmm. reserved for growing wheat and corn. Good. Three workers and two tons of fertilizers are always needed to grow an acre of wheat. Whereas an acre of corn requires two workers and four tons of fertilizers. If Copico has a variable 100 workers and 120 tons of fertilizers available, how many acres of wheat and corn should, should be grown that best utilize Copico's resources? Okay. Assume. Okay. Assume Copico utilizes all its resources. Uh, okay. The first question is: What is the decision variable here? Can we identify the decision variable? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the decision variable like that. The acres of land for wheat and corn. So X1 will be what? The number of. Number of. Uh, no, everything is not number of, number of. Take your time. Mm -hmm. The acres of land for wheat and corn. So X1 will be the. Number of what? Mm -hmm. So the acres of wheat to grow. We are we are acres of wheat to grow. Say that again. I didn't hear you. So yeah, the acres, acres of, of wheat to grow. Wheat to grow. Are we use? Are we growing? <laughs> Acres of land. The acres of wheat. No. Hey, we want to know the acres of land to grow wheat on. Mm -hmm. Then the acres so, of land to grow what? Corn. 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 Okay, that is the decision variable. What are Copico's resources here? Name the resources. Name the hey, 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 listen to No, you are wrong. I said... What are the resources? 
Fifty acres. Hey, somebody should be smart. What fifty are acres. The acres? Fertilizer. What are the resources? Fifty acres of land. No, no. What are the land. resources? Land. land. The resources are land, workers, and fertilizers. Perfect. Yeah. Then how much of each resource is available? Fifty acres. Fifty of land. acres of. Three workers and two tons no. of fertilizers. No. Hundred workers, one hundred and twenty. Hundred acres, one okay. and fifty mm -hmm. acres of land. You see that some of you are confused <laughs> along the line. You see, in the quest of formulating, pay attention to details. Okay, so let's see. This will be your solution. So let X1, X2 be acres of land allocated to grow wheat and corn respectively. But you can also make it, let X1 be acres of land allocated to grow wheat. Let X2 represent acres of land allocated to grow corn. Then by formulation, we are told that we have 50 acres to grow wheat and corn. So X1 plus X2 is what? 50. To use three workers and two workers to grow wheat and what? Corn. Please, the three, two here is not this two we are looking at. This one is acres. Let me write here. This is la uh, workers. And this is what? Fertilizer. Bear in mind that each of the resource must be formulated according to the allocation. So you don't pick two tons and come and write it here as what? Uh, workers. Please know that. So this two is this guy. Three workers, two workers. Three X1 plus two X with 100. Two tons of fertilizer and... The other one, four tons of what? Fertilizer, 2x1 plus 4x2 equals to what? 120. Good. So, in effect, this is what we have done. Then, the next question, we are doing systems of linear equation, not just an equation. So, I'm, that's why I'm taking my pain to take it through this. Okay. I'll leave this one for you to go through, okay? This is the... Then, if you are able to formulate this guy here, the next question is that, how do we... Okay, I think that's what we've done here. How do we transform matrix uh, linear equations into a matrix form? Then we can solve the problem. Therefore, if I have set of linear equation, I need to, number one, I've been able to know coefficient. I know coefficient. I know the decision variables, and I know what the resources. So the arrow pointing here is saying that group all the coefficients in the first matrix. Secondly, group all the decision variables in the second matrix. Then group all the resources in the third word matrix. Therefore, you see that the whole of this can be transformed into this guy here. These guys here. So that all the coefficients, we name it as what matrix A. All the decision variables, we name it as matrix X. And all the elements in the third matrix, we we'll name it as matrix what? Mm -hmm. If I do this, I've transformed, I have transformed a set of linear equation into a matrix what form. These are the linear equation transform into matrix. That's all we need. So let's see this example. You have three X1 plus X2 plus X3 equals to 40, same as this and same as the last one, four X1 plus three X2 plus all this. All that we said is that in the quest of transforming, group all the coefficients. Remember, these are one, one, one in front of the x2, x1 variables. So you have three 
one one. That is the first row. This is the first row. Then the second row, one one one, one one one. The third row is what four three one, four three one. Name this as matrix what A. Then C. All the decision variables are repeating in all the what equations. So we just put all of them together. X1, X2, and what? X3. Then the last one is equal to what? The resource. 40 is for row 1. 30 is for row 2. 60 is for what? Row 3. So respectively, you arrange them. Apart from the PC variables, you don't repeat. You just bring X1, X2, X3. If there are only two, it's X1 and X2 equals to so it just simply says that A times X to give you what? B. That's all we have here. So a solution to a linear system of M equation in N unknowns is a set of values for all the unknown. That is X1, X2, X3. Or we say they are just what? X. In the example above, that satisfy each of the systems of what? linear equation. So let me pick uh, one example, write it here quickly. I expect you to uh, understand what we've discussed immediately. So let's write this. If I have this guy here, if I have 3x1 plus 4x2 plus x3 equals to 50, x3 equals to 15, and I have x2, 2x2 plus 3x3 equals to 18. We want to transform this into a matrix form. All we're going to have is to have matrix A giving us what? 3, 4, one. Then I have what? Zero, zero, one. I have zero, two, three. This is matrix A. Matrix X will be what? X1, X2, X3. Then let's say we have matrix what? B. Also as what? 50, 15 and what? 18. In effect, I can write this as what? 3, 4, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 3 times x1, x2, x3 equal to what? 50, 15, and 18. I've transformed this guy, this one, into a matrix form. Please, do you follow? Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, please. I'm sure this is didactive enough for your consumption. So on that note, this will be the end of session one. If you have any question, raise your hand quickly so I can call you. So this will be the end for session one. Next week, we'll start from section two. And next week, we'll be meeting on, um, I think, on Wednesday. My other colleague will pick that session, okay? But I will meet you only on Fridays because the next Wednesday, I have another class clashing with your time. So he will take care of you. Uh, oh, let's see, Wednesday, your class is 10 to 12. Okay, I may, I may teach you. I may come back to teach you or he will teach you on that. If you have any question, if you don't have any question, then I think we can call it a day for today, all right? Hello, sister, please, about the um, fertilizers and corn, that question. I want you to explain it again, I beg. What's your challenge, my dear? The, that, the other question, the one before this one, the fertilizers, corn and workers. Um, this one, Kopiko. Yes. Yes, please. Okay, so let me yes. know what the problem is because we said the problem we have here 
we need to know the decision variables, okay? Kopiko Farms, they own 50 acres of land reserved for growing wheat and corn. All they want to decide on is what? How many of these land should be allocated to grow wheat and the other one to grow corn? Please, is that explainable? Then the next yes. one is that they have workers and fertilizers to use to grow wheat and what on. They have 100 workers and 120 tons of fertilizers available to use. How many workers should be allocated for growing wheat? How many workers should be allocated for growing corn? How many tons of fertilizers should we allocate for wheat and what? Corn. So we are saying that let X1 represent what? The, let's say- Acres of land. Acres of land space. Let me write you, let me write space. Allocated to grow wheat. Okay. Wheat. And let X2 land allocated space to grow what? Corn. 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 Then we have workers and fertilizers to use, but we have acres of lands too, which are supposed to be shared between these two. And because we don't know how many to share for, that's why we've written this statement. Therefore, for 50 acres, we can say that X1 plus X2 per the allocation should give us what 50. As to whether we are giving more space to wheat than corn, we have to solve the problem before we can know that. So this is for land. Then three workers are located for growing wheat. Two workers are located for growing what? Corn. So 3x2 plus 2x2 is equal to what? The number of workers, 100. Two tons of fertilizers are located for wheat. Four tons are located for what? Corn. So 2x2, one, sorry, plus 4x2 should be equal to the number allocated, 100 and what? 20 fertilizers. So the questions here, the first one is for you to what? Identify the decision variables to be made. What are the resources to, that you have? And how much of each resource available? Available means you are yet to use. You have available. We have 100 workers available, 120 tons of fertilizers available. What are the resources? We have acres of land, we have workers, and we have fertilizers. You did factors of production in SS or in economics, and you are told factors yeah. of production, capital, land, labor, others. So the resources are just what you have in this information. And what is the decision variable? We want to know how many acres of land to allocate for wheat, how many acres of land to allocate for what? Corn. But the name of the decision variable is wheat and what? Corn. These are the decisions we're supposed to make. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Any other questions, please? No question, okay. So on that note, I want to end the class here. Okay, there is a hand up. Uh, sir, please, how about the question you asked? Okay, okay, okay. So I was asking you to tell me, keep. Uh, screen sharing is closed. Let me share screen again. Yes, you were asking now by the identity matrix. Okay, so who can help us with this? Uh, with, I ask you a question somewhere. 
This one. Yes, who can help us? Uh, uh, Joshua, can you help us? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. The reason why a non um, a non square image is, is not convertible uh, is because let's say even a matrix three by two or n m by n. Mm -hmm. If there is a matrix which is also n, it's equal to um, n by n. That's a square matrix because maybe the final result might be zero ones, zero n ones. Mm -hmm. In the diagonal, it might not appear so because maybe it's either going to be one on the other side. Mm -hmm. Let's say, as you say, um, in the in the results, it's going to be um, one zero zero, mm -hmm. and there's going to be one one zero, and also zero zero one. So because in the second row there is one before, um, there is two ones in the, the second row. It is uh, it is that reason why a mm -hmm. square matrix is um, not inverted. Great, great, great. I think your explanation is good. Bright, do you also want to say something? Similarly to what um, Joe 